Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our team call for Diesel Dreamers. It's September 22nd, 2015. Um, tonight's guest is Amy Coppola, the amazing Amy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm super excited to have her on. And um, before we get started, I just want to say like a couple of her awesome accolades. Um, mm -hmm. The first ones that I wrote down, because I just like literally asked Amy 20 minutes ago to send me her thing. <laughs> totally forgot. Um, is that she's a mom for, of two beautiful kids, Sebastian and Angelina, and they are adorable. They make appearances on her Facebook all the time. Mm -hmm. um, she is a world traveler, a yogi. She is an amazing friend and mentor and coach. And she's just an awesome person to be around. Like when you're with her, that you can't help but smile and be happy just because she has this awesome energy with her and um, I met Amy, I believe the first time in Disney, like very briefly during the success club trip. And um, it was through like the other events and um, trips that we got to make a real friendship, I guess, and hang out and get to know each other better. And so that's like her awesome stuff, but her beach body stuff is also super awesome. So she's a seven star diamond in her first CBC. She is a one star diamond in her second to the center. She retired from her job. I want to say what, like two years ago already? Huh? It's been yep. probably two years ago to go full time with beach body. Um, she's an all star legend, 38 months in success club. She is a 2014 elite coach, which is like an amazing, amazing accomplishment. Um, and I want to say she's just like the epitome of making it happen regardless of all the stuff that like life throws in your way. Um, Amy's been through a lot of crap, unfortunately, mm -hmm. even though she's an amazing person and like, you know, like you wouldn't ever like wish that upon anyone. Like she's been through a lot and no matter what, she always persevered and um, she set her heart on her goals um, and her passion and everything just put everything on fire and, and made it happen. And, I'm proud to call you my friend and my fellow Diplomation coach. And um, thank you for being on our call. Thank you. Oh. What an introduction. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so um, we can get started. Um, I sent you the questions, but I'm going to read them off and then um, you can go ahead and respond. I never saw the questions. I'm sorry. It's if you sent them to me, I was traveling. And then I, just today, I was like, did Paulina ever send me the questions? So we're going to wing it. Okay. <laughs> No I'm gonna make it. You're not. I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So number one, how did you get started with Team Beach Body? Oh, that's a fun one because I knew Becky and Christy from high school days. Um, I'm in between them. Becky's older than me. Christy's younger than me. Um, then we didn't know each other, but we ran kind of in the same crowds. And then um, they used to work out at Shula's, and I started working at Shula's in the athletic club. So I knew them from there for a while. But anyhow, we had similar friends, so we would see each other. You guys might be on the wedding circuit right now where some of your friends are getting married, so you, you know, see friends at weddings. So after that comes the baby shower circuit, so then you go to all the baby showers together. So I would see Becky um, and Christy, you know, once a year at all these different events. And, and our kids were born around the same time, me and Becky's. Um, our kids were born around the same time, and... So I would see her pregnant and skinny and pregnant and skinny. And I've always been pretty athletic, but um, after Angelina was born, my second, I kind of, you know, had let, not let go, but, you know, um, your body changes, everything changes. And I had the mentality, well, that's just how you are after you have kids. You're just kind of frumpy and soft and lumpy and not sexy anymore. So... I was okay with that. I mean, you never feel good about that, but I was like, all right, whatever. Um, and then I would see Becky on Facebook and she's got the kids the same age as mine and she's getting smaller and smaller and leaner and, and then sexy. And I'm like, how the heck is she looking sexy after kids? And I just had kids and I don't look anything like her. So I messaged her one day and she told me, oh yeah, I'm actually, I'm doing P90X and I'm doing this thing called Shakeology. And I was like, ugh. Yeah, P90X, right. <laughs> so, um, but Shakeology I was interested in. So I was like, you know what, let me, I had bought a week sample from her. And she came over to my house, dropped it off. We caught up for a second. And I was, I had grown up, you know, drinking protein powder. So I thought it was going to be another protein powder. So when I actually tasted Shakeology, I was like, whoa, this thing is awesome. Because it's nothing like, you know, traditional nasty chalky protein powders that I was expecting. So, um 
I loved it and I reported back to her I loved it and everything but then I really at the time thought there's no way I could afford this I don't have the money for this um, what had happened in a nutshell was I had a really great job doing accounting my ex-husband had a good job um, as well we were bringing you know over six figures in we were in our career mode of life so we thought and um, then all the things started happening with you know the economics of the housing market and my ex wound up losing his job i wound up losing my job after i had angelina i was laid off um so anyhow we were in a really tight financial bind then he went out and decided to buy a restaurant so um that was kind of like a hail mary like if you're gonna do something if you were gonna go down you might as well go and chase your dream so we tried that for a couple of years and that just made things even worse financially. So we were like with nothing to the point that we eventually had to contact an attorney. Attorney advised us to file bankruptcy to try and save our house that was going into foreclosure. Um, so we did that. We filed for bankruptcy. And um, in the meantime, I had gone to work for an attorney um, just part time doing her books because I had um, done accounting for 13 years. And when I and it's funny, she's one of my downline coaches now. She's about to hit diamond. Um, <laughs> it's funny. So um, anyhow, we had no extra money. We had nothing. We filed bankruptcy. Our house was being foreclosed on. And so I was like, yeah, it's delicious, but I, I can't do that. You know, I can't fork out $130 a month. And we hear that all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So... Um, so, you know, I told Becky, oh, you know, I probably made up some excuse because I was living a lie. We were always, you know, not well off, but we were always comfortable. And we his, my ex's, um, you know, circle of friends is always very wealthy. So it was like we were in this, you know, crazy state trying to, you know, lie about our situation and put on these fronts that, you know, everything was fine when really it was terribly wrong. Um, so... Eventually, Becky kept, you know, checking in with me here and there. Oh, so I probably told Becky a lie about why I couldn't. Also, I don't remember. But, um, <laughs> but she would check in on me every couple of months. Hey, how's it going? And I would keep watching her and Christy, and I'd keep watching. And I'm like, man, they're looking better and better. And, and I started running marathons because that's free, right? So <laughs> I would get up at 5 in the morning and go run. And I did lose weight, but my body shape didn't change. So, like, if you've ever run a marathon or even gone to see one, you see that there's all shapes and sizes. There's really heavy people who actually can run full marathons. Um, you can lose weight. But the actual body and your physique, you have to do strength training. You have to do all these other things that I wasn't doing. So um, after that, Becky kept checking in. Becky kept checking in. Finally, they went to Summit four years ago or three years ago, whenever, right before I joined, three years ago. And I see Becky, a picture of Becky on stage with Tony Horton. And I'm like, this is for real. <laughs> oh, and in the meantime, I had finally bought P90X2 for myself. And I had done the P90X2 program, still no Shakeology. I'd done the program and I was like, okay, this really works. Because I had gotten, you know, somewhat of a transformation already just from one program. Um, so when she came back from Summit, I'm like, you know what, that's it. I'm going to give this thing one month and we'll see what happens. And um, I figured, you know, within that first month, if I didn't have three people join, then I would just cancel because um, I couldn't afford it every month after. But I'd saved up and I got the Les Mills Pump Challenge Pack and enrolled as a coach. And then it was, I got those first three customers. And then I went, okay, that wasn't that hard. I can do it again. And then the next month I got three more and then the next month, you know, hitting success club basically every single month, um, which became my actual why, because at that point my relationship, I knew it was going to pieces and um, my kids were oh, three years ago. They were six and three. Yeah, they were six and three. Um, and so I really just wanted to, you know, I mean, this was after years of struggle and I just wanted to be able to give them something nice, something, you know, happy to make it through this shitty time they're about to go through. And I had no money. You know, my mom on occasion was having to give me money for groceries. It was that bad. And, you know, and that was a big hit to my ego too, because it wasn't like I was just out of, you know, high school. I was a grown, grown woman who used to have an, a, a career. And so that sucked. But I, that year, the Success Club trip was to Disney World. 
And so with Disney World, I was like, oh man, if I can win that trip, like regardless of anything, they're going to pay, you know, for me to show up with my kids. I can drive up there. I'll figure it out. It's in the spring, you know, and this was back in like August. So I was contemplating about it. And I was like, I think I'm going to go for it. So then I figured out everything you had to do. And in order to have everything paid that particular year, each year it changes. Um, I found out halfway through that you had to fast track to diamond that year, which meant you had to become diamond in 90 days. So on day 89, I became diamond and got everything. And in the meantime, my ex and I, you know, decided to go separate ways, but he was going to leave on the 26th of December. So the kids could have us together for Christmas. And, um, and so I'm still no money at all. So I went to the Disney store and got the little Disney gift cards. Like you just take them from the register. <laughs> they didn't have any value on them or anything, but I wrapped them up and put them on the tree and told the kids that that was from Santa. That was their, you know, Christmas gift that we were going to go to Disney World. And they were ecstatic. And it was so nice for me to be able to like give them, you know, that gift. So that was a huge why that really helped, you know, drive me through. And then um, from there, it's just gone and gone and gone. But the story can go forever. <laughs> That's how I got started. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you for sharing. So what was your big aha moment that made you realize and really understand the opportunity that you have with the business? Well, that's good because that's actually, we didn't even plan this. This is perfect. It's, it's actually a continuation of the story because, um, so I became diamond and so I was diamond by, you know, November, whatever. And then, you know, December came and he moved out on the 26th of December I went up to Orlando to stay with my sister for a couple of days with the kids while I moved out and um and I had gone back to school because I had gone to school for theater wound up as an accounting manager for 13 years talk about lost and maybe you guys can relate because you come out of school and you get a degree in one thing and you wind up in a whole nother field and then you've never done anything with what you thought you were going to pursue mm -hmm. um so I went back to school because the attorney I had started working for, you know, part time, uh, she knew, you know, I told her what was happening. And she said, well, you're going to need full time. And, you know, how about this paralegal work that I outsource? If you can do it, I'll happily give it to you to do. You know, you do a great job with accounting. I'm sure you can handle this. Um, but I kind of love to do everything like all the way. And I had kind of had the idea that, you know, with paralegal, maybe I could, um, you know, do paralegal work for different types of um, sole practicing lawyers. Hi. Hi, Hi Angelina. Hi, Sebastian. Sebastian. <laughs> okay, good. Go back to bed. <laughs> yes, one more show. Yay! Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, um, attorney law. So I had gone back to school to do the paralegal program at Miami Dade Wolfson campus. So that was pretty interesting at 30, however old I was going back to school. And, um, and then I was also working beach body. And then I was also working for the attorney and quite a, quite a few things. But so beach body was fine, but it was more of a hobby. Um, I didn't, and I, I enjoyed whatever income I was getting from it, but I really didn't think that it was going to be something that could provide the income that it can, the opportunity that it is. So actually, when I went on the Disney trip, the Success Club trip, um, Becky kept telling me, you have to sit down with Jason Dybul. And he was this weird looking guy. Um, and if you've never met him, you'll meet him. Um, and I'm looking at him, I'm like, that guy? And she's like, yeah, he's, he's genius. Like, he knows all about numbers. And you like numbers, you, sh you really need to sit down with him. So I actually approached him, went up to him, you know, met arranged a meeting with him and you know like a lot of people in your upline they're happy to help you so um before I left Disney on that Sunday we sat down and you know went through my organization which was really just the bare minimums a bunch of discount coaches that I had placed just to get to diamond and then my ex I had as one of my emeralds on the one side and then my sister I had made an emerald on the other side and um which is fine to do. I mean, it's ideally you want people who are going to grow your business, but you know, when you're going after that goal for a diamond first, first you got to scrap, like you got to get in there and do what it takes. I was taking my kids to Disney no matter what. So I did what it took, you know, to get it. But then again, long term, it's not going to create, you know, income. So I'd see, you know, not much income from it. Um, 
So when he sat down with me, he kind of explained team cycle bonuses, how that works, how I could create residual income with team cycle bonuses. And, you know, I said, okay, well, how about, you know, let's say $500 a week. That would be so awesome if I could make $500 a week with this. And he said, okay, well, this is what you would need to do. You know, you have to have this many Shakeology orders on this site each week and this many on the other side. And that's from all of your team. So all of your coaches and there are any orders that come through them. So he kind of broke it down for me. And when I left, it was like, yeah, right. How am I ever going to have that many Shakeology orders on each leg? But at the same time too, it was, oh, but if I get that or when I get that, when it gets to that point, that's the income that I can make. It's there waiting for me. Um, this is the structure of the business that anybody can do. And it's as fast or as slow as you want to take it. But shoot, I was out of money. I was doing all these crazy things, trying to reinvent the wheel. And here it was sitting right there for me doing something I loved anyways, you know, coaching and helping people and running challenge groups. And it's a lot of fun. So why not? go after that. So that's what I started doing. I, um, you know, went after that. And that was my big aha moment, though, because that's when I realized the potential of, of what it could become. So I'm coming out of bankruptcy, and I'm a single mom, and my kids are in aftercare. And I have no money, and I have no help. I have no money to hire help. I have, you know, all these things, but there was the solution. So even though it's not going to be an easy solution, it's such a huge solution. So that was definitely my aha moment. Awesome. Thank you. And I love how you say that. That's the solution. It really is. And it is for all of us. No matter, you know, what you're going through or what your goals are, this is the way you can get whatever you like, right. you know? And, and a lot of times people want to put Beachbody on the back burner when they have things come up. Um, you know, when they get busy with this or, you know, oh, well, I'm going to get married. Somebody told me that the other day and I'm like, how are you going to pay for it? <laughs> And she's like, I don't know, I'm going to borrow. And I'm like, no, this is the time you get the other, like you're, you're in the bridal industry now, not industry, but a circle of brides and you grab all of them and, you know, do a challenge together, a wedding countdown challenge. And, and here you go. And, and at the same time, you're creating a business and that's going to be your solution. Um, same thing. Oh, I have this medical issue and I have all these medical bills. Okay, great. So how are you going to pay for it? Because this is, this is it. So I really love for people instead of pushing beach body back when they get busy to embrace it even more so and realize that that's really a way out. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So next question. Um, what's the core activity you engaged in that has grown your business the most? Oh, it's redundant success club. <laughs> okay. And we can move on then. I, you know, <laughs> Okay. I've been 38 months in the business and I'm 38 months success club five. I don't hit 10 all the time. I'm people who do it are awesome. Retail is not my strong suit, but I don't let that, you know, divert me from at least getting five every single month. And you know, it's at whatever level you have to just have that constant incoming. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. So number four, looking back, what would you have done differently when starting out? Or is there anything you would have done differently? Um, or something that you wish you would have known earlier? Well, I think it presented itself at an opportune time, but knowing I, I do try and let my team know about the income potential very early on. Okay. So that way they realize, you know, because in, and, and in the beginning, I might not have even listened to it. It might have gone right over my head. And a lot of times it does. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why it kind of presented itself at the right time anyhow. But I do like to let people know really early on the potential of it. Awesome. Thank you. So how do you promote your challenges, your business opportunity calls, sneak peeks? Do you have any tips for getting people engaged or interested? Yep. I got the secret. <laughs> Ready? Share, share, share. <laughs> so the secret is, and Carl said it one day, right after I said it on a call with Jeffrey Armbruster or something. He didn't get it from me, though. I, I, I. <laughs> yes, just great minds think alike, and I'm so modest. No. <laughs> no, 
Um, well, it's funny because especially in the beginning, and a lot of a lot more people fast track the diamond now than used to. But like when I did it, people were like, "Wow, you got the diamond in ninety days!" Like, and it wasn't nearly as popular as it is now. Um, so I did, um, you know, quite a few team calls and they would say, well, what, what have you been doing? What's the secret? And after a while of getting that question, I was like, you know what the secret is? You just never stop inventing and working. That's the secret. I mean, because like I could tell you, oh, this month I did my like page and I, you know, boosted my like page and that worked. And then next month I might do it and it's not going to work. Um, and one month I might create a, you know, hot and sexy bikini body challenge group. And then the next month that doesn't work. Um, so some things work, some things don't, some things work for a while and then they don't anymore. But the, the spirit of entrepreneurship and, and this, which is our business, um, that's really just being able to go with the flow. And when something's not working, you think of the next thing. You don't just go, Oh, okay, I suck at this. And a lot of times when people sit back and say, oh, this isn't for me. No, it's for anybody, but you have to constantly be, and it's not reinventing the wheel. We know what works. Success club works, challenge groups work, but reinventing the way that you're marketing yourself, reinventing the way that you're attracting new um, clients, reinvent the way that you're interacting with your own clients to get referrals. Um, it's, it's the secret is work. That's it. I agree. <laughs> kind of easy. Um, yeah, easy and hard at the said, same time. Yeah, yeah, of course, it's it's simple, but it's not easy, right? Mm -hmm. But as long as you're, you know, continuing to improve yourself, and obviously through personal development, and just right. like you said, you know, figuring out what's worked in the past, what hasn't worked, and just you know, if it's not working, try something new. I yeah. feel like you know, it's hard sometimes. Like we get stuck in our ways, and we like you know, we're the only yeah. thing stopping ourselves from going forward. Yep. Okay. Awesome. And then, but personal development is that attitude because if you're if you're not doing personal development, you sit back and you go, "Oh, I suck at this. Oh, I'm a bad coach, or oh, you know, I'm just not cut out for this." That's that's your mindset that's going to get in your own way of failure. The one who gets in the way of your success is yourself, and that happens time and time again. And the you know that's the big huge, you know gift that personal development gives us is it it gets ourselves out of our way um because we're reading this stuff and we're going oh you know what that's right you know jim Rohn says in one of his big things you know a, a major league baseball player makes it to the big leagues and gets paid millions of dollars um just to bat a 30 percent. so that means 70 percent of the time he sucks 70 percent of the time he fails Mom. And so if you're not thinking about that, though, if that's not your mindset, then you get seven no's and you're like, oh, man. And that's like the millionaire, like the best guys out there get 70, you know, 30%. Yeah. So, you know, in, you know, the that personal development piece in particular, that seminar he did, um, you know, he goes on and on to expand about that. And it's all about numbers. And the more that you do this, the higher your average will get. But in the beginning, you might bat at 10%. You might get one yes out of 20 no's, you know. But if you aren't hearing this, if you're not reading it and putting everything into perspective, it's going to be really easy for you to sit back and go forget it, you know, where you don't want to say, oh, forget it to an opportunity like this. That's like, the, you know, not what you want to do. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm sure like once you were getting started and you had that goal of earning your trip to Disney, you probably heard a lot of no's, a lot of rejection. Oh, absolutely. You kept going and, you know, it's a numbers game. Mm -hmm. Up your invites, you know, kept on and right. give up. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. So do you have any systems in place for onboarding new coaches and training your team in general? This is where I suck. I'll say it. <laughs> You're seven star diamonds. Okay, fine. Um, <laughs> it, this is my challenge area. For onboarding, I have a coach basics. Um, I do a getting started right call. We go over the seven day quick start. We go over an online office. Um, and we basically go from there. I try and get a, a gauge on their interest in working the business right from the start. Um, and so that way, if it's somebody who is strictly does not want to know anything about the business and they only want 
you know, to get their Shakeology for a $13 discount, I'm not spending two hours on the phone with them for no reason. Because, I mean, think about it from a business perspective, and it doesn't feel that way now if you're not, you know, making a big significant income off of this. But eventually, I'll tell you this is what it's going to be. Your time is money. So if you're spending this time on these new coaches that you could be investing your money, aka time, into somebody else who wants to really be working the business, who wants to, you know, who's eager to hear what you have to say, who's eager to, you know, um, engage and, and learn themselves in the business, then you're kind of, um, you know, you're not allocating your time properly. So right from the beginning, and it doesn't mean that you dismiss them by any means, you know, you add them, I add them to my team page, I keep in touch with them all the time. And sometimes, you know, oh my gosh, I've lost 10 pounds. And now my sister wants to do it. Oh, okay. So do you want me to show you how now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so you don't, you don't send them away. But in the beginning, you know, they can have the opportunity to join the group, they can have everything like that. Um, but, you know, at the same time, too, you just kind of have to be wise because we're all busy, right? Are you busy? Not your head. Not your head. Yes. Not your head. <laughs> <laughs> You're busy, and you don't want to. You know, you don't want to waste time. And and even those two hours that you spend with somebody on the phone that doesn't want to hear it, um, you could be spending that time recruiting ten more people. You know, it's so. But once they are on, you got to really help them and, and give them that information. For sure. And this kind of leads up to the next question. So how do you balance your business along with your other responsibilities? You know, especially having younger kids that are in school and I'm sure they have a lot of like after school stuff before yeah. you were working full time and juggling your business. Um, how did you do it? And how do you continue to do it? <laughs> so when I started, it was even crazy, really crazy. Um, when I started, I was going to school. I was working. I was learning how to be a single mom. I was, Angelina was only three, so she was pretty small still, so my kids were in two different schools. Um, but basically, you've got to take advantage of every minute in the day. So if you have a lunch break, you know, you plan your day out. And by planning your day out, it's just like planning your meals out. If you plan your meals out ahead of time, it's going to be that much easier tomorrow morning to wake up. You grab your food, you grab this, you grab your bag of carrots, you grab your hummus that you already separated. Bam, you're on the road, you're having a successful day, you're productive, you feel great, and it's not as stress. Even though you're probably doing something a little bit more tedious than the drive through it's already laid out. You've already done the prep work and you're, you're good. So it's the same thing with time management. Um, you know, you've got to set. So every Sunday I sit down, I look at my week, I plan it out and I say, okay. And during lunch, okay, so this is what I'm going to do during my, when I was working. So this is what I'm going to do during my lunch break or during my classes. Okay, and I used to plan my schedule so I could get, and I don't know why there's a playback, but I used to plan my schedule so I could sit in my car and eat my lunch at school while <laughs> they were playing the National Wake Up Call. I was just so excited for <laughs> the National Wake Up Call every single week. So I'd sit in the car and eat my little sandwich and my bag of carrots and, um, and listen to the National Wake Up Call. And then too, you know, I'd have, you know, some podcast or whatever else or t recorded team calls that I could listen to while I was driving, you know, home. Um, I would check in with people in the early morning when I first woke up, when I would do my workout, I'd set aside 20 minutes to check in with everybody then. Um, you know, you kind of check in here and there throughout the day, but then the nighttime, put the kids to bed and I'd sit down and do business, um, once everything else was done and it was not easy. It's not easy. Um, but I don't know any other job in two years or three years time that you can have the return on your investment, you know, and the income that you can have with this. There's nothing. <laughs> I swear. There's really nothing. Like, let me think about it really good and hard. There's, yeah. there's nothing. So, so it was worth I, all the sacrifice. Absolutely. And then some, like, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we have seven minutes left. So let me like go through the, the last few okay. questions. Quickly. Um, what's your favorite personal, personal development book or audio? You're a badass, but everybody knows that one. <laughs> I listen yeah. to it like at the end of every month. I mean, I read the book like a few, like when it came out like last year or whatever. And then yeah. every month, I always listen to it. But, yeah, it's yeah. really good. And then you know which one I've always heard and I've never listened to the other day when I was driving home from Tampa. Though I stuck it on, it was only an hour and forty minutes. 
Like that's the time it takes you to watch a movie. Yeah. Um, it was go for no. And I've heard about it a million times and I'd never put it on. Cause it was like one of those, like you've heard it so many times. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's so good. Like I'm doing even like a team movie night, AKA movie. They were all going to sit and listen to it oh, for an so hour and 40 cute. minutes. Like bring that. your popcorn, bring your wine, bring whatever you want, but oh, we're going to sit down and listen for an hour and 40 minutes to go for no. And it is so, so good. And it, it talk about a mind shift. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. So what's one action you recommend we do right now to help us move our businesses forward? Listen to go for no. <laughs> All right, girls, we're having a movie night. <laughs> okay, great. Um, and what you need to do is, if, um, there's quite a bit, but I'll narrow it. You have to have goals and like really solid goals, not like, I hope by next year I can pay my student loans. That's great. That's a really important goal. That's an overall goal. But you have to get really specific with your goals in order to make this a reality. So like that first aha moment that I had when I sat down with Jason, I actually put a dollar amount on it. So, you know, if it's, you know, my student loans cost me $200 a month, that would be a kind of high. I don't know. Anyhow, my student loans cost me $200 a month or my car loan cost me $200 a month. Um, and I'd really love to pay that off because after that, I'd have $200 of spending money every month that I could go do whatever the heck I want with or savings if you're a responsible person. But you can just come fly around and do yoga with me instead. It'll be fun. Um, and But you have to get really specific with it. You have to know, okay, well, my student loans, how much do I want to pay? Okay, so in the beginning, let's say I just want to pay an extra $40 on it per month, you know, just to pay it off quicker um, because maybe $200 a week off the, off the you know, bat is, you know, unrealistic or whatever, which it's not. Um, but whatever dollar amount that it is, you need to get really specific with your goals. And then when you get specific with your goals, you need to write an action plan to say, okay, this is my goal and this is how I'm going to do it. So an extra $200 a week, if I'm just doing that with retail, if you don't have any team yet, um, you know, that's four challenge packs per week at $50 commission. And you break it down and suddenly when you're seeing it like that, when you're seeing it as in, okay, it's four new clients that need to jump on the 21-day fix with me. That's it. And it's going to pay off my student loan. But, you know, it starts just becoming a really clear pathway for you when you do that. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And last question, what are you most proud of? It doesn't have to be beach fighters, but... Yeah, I was going to say my kids. Duh. No. <laughs> no, my kids. My kids are awesome. And, and I'm... I'm proud of me, not going to lie. I'm proud of me for being able to give them the life that I want to now um, because that's really what um, drew the line for me when I thought, like, you know, they're going to be in aftercare every day until 6. I'm not going to be able to cook for them. I'm not going to be able to clean for them. I'm going to be working for somebody else, sitting in traffic all day. Who's going to take them to gymnastics? How am I going to pay for gymnastics? Um, you know, and that – it put me in a corner and I'm a Leo. It doesn't have to be about Zodiac signs, but just so happens I'm, I'm very, um, I'm a Leo and <laughs> you put me in the corner and I just kind of, you know, so I was put in the corner, you know, and my ego was smashed on the floor in a million pieces. And, but I said, you know what? No, this is not, this is not acceptable. And I put my foot down. This is not the way I'm going to live my life. I'm going to live it on my terms. And these are my terms. And this is what I'm going to have to do to get there. And that's, you know, getting really clear on what you want. Um, you know, and if you don't have kids yet, it doesn't have to be about your kids, but it can be about whatever you want. You know, if you're in a job that you think is miserable, that you really don't see yourself being happy there the rest of your life, or even if you like your job, but you just feel trapped by the schedule of it. Um, I'm a free bird, so I like to have freedom, but to each his own. But I'm proud that my team, let's, let's send to that, has been able you know, to really rally with me and create this lifestyle for them, for my family. Awesome. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, we have like less than two minutes, so I just want to say thank you again. Um, sure. And you're awesome. I love it. I love it. <laughs> we can take a picture. Yeah, everybody. I think I better light. <laughs> Smile. Thank you so much, Amy. I really appreciate you being on our call. I hope everyone. Sure.
got a lot of takeaways and some golden nuggets from what you shared. Um, I'm also going to ask you if you have any recorded calls. I know you've done a few about reverse engineering your goals and stuff. If you could share that with me or in the event page, yeah. I think that'd be really good. Yeah, um, if I don't remember to do it tonight, if you look in iTunes and just type in Amy Coppola, the Fit Union, whole okay. entire series comes up, and awesome. it'll pull you right to that one. Perfect. Okay, girls. Podcast. All right. Good night, everybody. Amy Coppola. Thank you so much. I love you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. Love you guys. Bye, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you for being on.